Hello, this is Liz Lawless, your host for Wild West Diversity, where we tell the rarely and untold stories of multicultural contributions to the settling of the American Wild West. Each Thursday at 5 p.m. Central Standard Time, we'll be sharing a historical legend and a living legend. Someone from history and someone living that Western lifestyle today, keeping it alive for the future generation. We hope you'll join us on Thursday. If not, we'll see you on the trail. Hello, this is your host, Liz Lawless for Wild West Diversity. Well, uh, live streaming is always fun, and sometimes we have some technical issues. So uh, Mr. Allen won't be with us today, but we'll try to have him on again next week. But as the last day of Women's History Month, we wanted to continue to share some stories about women. Uh, we mentioned them a little bit, but we want to tell you a little bit more of a longer story. Um, you can go back to uh, the previous episodes and find out about Johanna July. You can go back and find out about Aunt Riddy Foster, Henrietta Foster Williams. You can go back and find out about uh, Kathy Williams, which is who we're going to be talking about today. Um, and so all of these uh, women are women of the Wild West. They uh, made contributions in their communities, but most of the time we haven't heard too much about them. So uh, we were talking today about Buffalo Soldiers, and we'll kind of continue to do that off and on between now and the end of July, because July is Texas Buffalo Soldier Month, and so we have a lot of celebrations down here because there are forts across Texas. Um, after the Civil War, people came into Galveston Island, and they um, set up uh, African-American soldiers for the very first time. Um, not that soldiers that African Americans didn't serve in the American and the Civil War, they certainly did in the French Wars and the Indian Wars, but this was specifically with the Indian Wars moving west uh, of the Mississippi after the Civil War. So in 1866, uh, they commissioned um, off four different units, infantry units and two cavalry units. Uh, that later became known as the Buffalo Soldiers. They were black troops um, that were known um, later on once they were out on the plains. The Indians saw them, and that's where their name came from, um, because Native Americans saw these soldiers with black faces, with black curly hair that fought fiercely, and it reminded them of the buffalo, and they thought the buffalo had uh, maybe come to life and <laughs> or come back to life. Uh, and we're writing them. So um, so that's what we're going to talk a little bit about today. And we're going to specifically talk about um, Kathy Williams, who um, joined up and pretended to be a man and joined the Army. So uh, we've got some slides we're going to walk through. So you're going to see some of that history. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about that today. <laughs> and then over the next few weeks, we'll be talking about uh, sort of Flipper, uh, Henry Flipper, and uh, Isaiah Mays and Benjamin Brown. These were all Buffalo soldiers who won the Medal of Honor uh, on the field of battle. And so we'll be sharing that information with you. You can find this information in written form at www.wildwestdiversity.com. That's our um, e-newsletter. Um, the live streams that we're doing each week on Thursday will also archive to our YouTube channel. So you can always go back there and uh, watch the show or you can find us on the podcast. We're actually on uh, on multiple podcasts, we pull the audio down from each show, and then that is played also. So that is available for somebody who um, likes the audio, as who who is an audio learner. So, um, but Kathy Williams is who we're going to share about today. So Kathy grew up. She was actually born in um, Independence, Missouri, in 1842. Her father was a free man, but her mother was a slave. So as a child, she worked in the house, in the fields there for a um, wealthy farmer. And then the Civil War happened and the, the Union soldiers came across and 
captured not only Kathy, but um, some other uh, slaves and some other people. And they took them to Little Rock, Arkansas, which was one of the uh, bases there. And so she was a cook and a, a laundress for uh, the general there, a general named Sheridan. And so that was um, her life. So she was around the military during the Civil War, during those three or four years when the Civil War was going on. Everybody thought that war was going to be over quickly. The North thought they were going to win. The South thought they were going to win. And it actually drug off longer than they thought. But after the Civil War, they commissioned Black troops for the first time. And they had four troops. They were um, cavalry. They had two cavalry troops and four infantry troops that went out and basically served during those years, uh, about 10 years during the Indian Wars, as people were moving across the West. And so obviously cavalry units uh, went ahead. They helped uh, settlers. They protected wagon trains. They fought off bandits. They, they fought off Indian because there were Indian raids, obviously, and there were uh, bandit raids on all of these people that were traveling to court California. So this was the Southern route. So people came into Galveston. They came across Texas. Texas had multiple forts across the state and then into New Mexico. And, and Kathy was actually stationed in New Mexico once she signed up. But she saw all her cousins signing up for the Army. Um, after the war, there weren't a lot of jobs. and There certainly weren't jobs available for African-American women. You still could work in the house or you could work in the field. And Kathy decided she wanted to be more independent than that. She didn't want to have to depend on her family, a husband, somebody else uh, to take care of her. She knew she could walk as far as her cousins could walk, shoot as well as they could shoot, ride as well as they could ride. And so she went to sign up. But before 1948, it was illegal for women to join the military. So she went and signed up as William Kathy because she knew that when they called Private Kathy, she would hear her name and she would be able to answer and she would respond. And so she served for two years um, before they found out <laughs> she was a woman. And she served in the infantry because she was 5'9". And uh, we have these records. The reason we know this is because the military is great about documenting things. And so um, the records for William Kathy are there. Um, and he was, you know, his height and his weight and all of that and where he was from were all uh, in the documents. And so so Kathy served and the only one that knew um, about her were her cousins and maybe a friend. Um, but, of course, as the years went on, she actually served two years. There began to be rumors. There began to be some speculation and people started to ask questions and her cousins thought they would get in trouble. And so they begged her to go ahead and try to muster out on a disability because um, she did have some feet issues, some issues with her feet and her health a little bit because it, it was a hard life. It was not an easy life. You can see here uh, the tents, that they, they, they had a tent. They, they It was like this. A lot of times they didn't have tents. They just slept out on the ground. They put a blanket down on the ground and they slept around campfires and things like that. So um, it was a hard life, but they wanted Kathy to, um, they were afraid they were going to get caught. So they wanted her to turn herself kind of in as, as a medical thing and try to get a medical discharge. And so that is what happened. She did go um, to the infirmary. She waited, she waited, she waited. Nobody came to see her because the, the doctors at the forts were white and they weren't really that excited about treating African-American soldiers. So finally, she pretended to have some heart issues and they called the doctor in and obviously he found out that Kathy was a woman, <laughs> not a man. And so that was Lee Reed, one of our uh, great storytellers who shares all these stories about these wonderful women of the West. And so um, Lee's telling that story about how Kathy uh, was found out and they sent her as far away as they could, like two or three towns away, because the uh, head of the fort there, the head of all the men, he did not want anyone to know that she had served two years with these men at this fort and nobody knew. 
Um, so they did give her, a, a, you know, a discharge on a disability. Uh, and the reason we know these things is because, like I talked about earlier, the military kept great records. And later on, as Kathy, she went to Colorado after the Civil War. I'm Civil War, I'm sorry, after uh, serving in two years after the Civil War and serving her two years, um, she went to Colorado and continued to cook and do laundry work for military families because uh, obviously there were still military all across the plains, what we now consider Texas, Colorado, Kansas, um, New Mexico, Utah, and into California. And so there were Buffalo soldiers or black soldiers that served. Um, they served at parks, at national parks across the United States, what we consider the Midwest and the Northwest. They they served across the Southwest. And so um, this is um, reenactment at rodeos that we have, our Cowboys of Color rodeos. We always tell the story of Buffalo soldiers um, because they had a great part in the settling of the American West and protecting settlers. They built telegraph um, poles, they built towns, they built forts. Um, all of those things were um, activities that Buffalo soldiers participated in. And in Texas, we're very lucky in that we have a program called the Texas Buffalo Soldier Program. It is celebrated over 20 years. It's been in um, this state. And basically at the Texas parks, you might see a Buffalo Soldier Program. It is the only cultural program in the state of Texas. Um, it was founded by uh, Captain Ken Pollard. Ken has played the role of the chaplain because most of these uh, black soldiers could not read or write, but that was a part of serving in the military. They were, um, they were taught, they were educated. So uh, the chaplain, there was usually a chaplain with each of these units and the chaplain taught them how to read and write using the Bible. Um, also using a dice and cards is how he taught them math. So uh, many of these soldiers that had been illiterate had not been allowed to be educated and to learn to read and write, learn to read and write when they were in the service. They had to serve five years and after serving five years, they were given land. So that's another reason that these courageous men and this woman, Kathy Williams, uh, signed up because they wanted to get the land after serving for five years and have their own place. Uh, and many of these soldiers did that. So as we uh, go through the next few months, we'll be sharing more stories about Sergeant Benjamin Brown, about uh, Isaac Mays, Isaiah Mays, um, and some of these other great Buffalo soldiers that served during these years of the Indian Wars when America was creating their manifest destiny and moving across the West from the Mississippi and the East Coast. Um, so you can see here are the programs we do with kids, how kids are fascinated to meet and hear these stories from these volunteers. These Most of these Texas Buffalo soldiers are volunteers. Um, they either work, uh, they work regular jobs during the week and on the weekend. They do these programs, they go out to schools and do programs, they go to churches, they go to youth programs and communities. Um, and for us, for many years, they did came out to the Cowboys of Color rodeos and participated with us um, by sharing this history, by setting up camps and bringing out all the artifacts. Um, they had food and they had, they cooked out for people and uh, and so it's a really exciting time, a really educational opportunity. And you can see here, um, these are the forts that were there available in 1875. So a lot of these forts, it, parts of these forts are still there. Uh, Fort Davis, you can see there are Fort Stockton, Fort Concho, Fort McCavert. A lot of these forts are still um, there and have been kept up and have been um, uh, designated as historical uh, places. And so you can go, you can travel in different places across Texas uh, and see these forts. You can see Fort Griffin, Fort Richardson up here by the Dallas-Fort Worth area, um, down by uh, San Antonio and south, there's Fort Clark, Fort Duncan. Um, there were even forts down uh, all the way down Fort Brown, down on the tip of what we consider Texas today in Mexico. And then you can see Fort Quitman and Fort Bliss, 
So all of these forts were there and with people traveled, they could stop there at the forts um, and hopefully have some kind of safety. And, uh, and so the Buffalo soldiers were very instrumental in helping uh, protect these settlers as well as cattle drives and other th activities that went on during the late 1800s and the 1860s, 70s, 80s. And um, so you can find out more about them. You can study about them. We have programs, like we say, for schools. And so we have these uh, coloring sheets for the kids. Uh, we have supplemental education that teaches them uh, these things. And we have videos. And so a lot of that material is available. There's some wonderful information available at the Texas Parks and Wildlife Department a website. I think it's uh, Texas PTPWD, so Texas Park and Wildlife Division is what that is, probably .org. Um, you can find that. And so Kathy Williams, like we say, the only female documented female Buffalo soldier because she went back and tried to get her disability in her later years. Um, and they rejected that because obviously it was illegal for women to serve in the military. And so because of that, they, they did not give her her disability. Uh, and then she moved to, um, to New Mexico, I guess, back to New Mexico and uh, died there at 82. But you can see how harsh it was, you know, the tents and living on the land. And like you say, a lot of times, um, even though there was some uh, opportunity for African-American uh, men to have a job and be uh, courageous and feel courageous and feel proud to be a part of um, the units that they were in, it was a tough life. They did not probably get the best supplies. They didn't get the best horses, the best equipment, things like that. Um, a lot of times they had to make their own things. But but these a lot of these men were men who had been slaves, who were freed slaves. And so they saw this as an opportunity uh, to get land, to, to serve their country, uh, to give back uh, to uh, America and to find a new place for themselves. And you can see it was rugged territory that they um, had to traverse and do. So um, kind of interesting to think about what if you were a teenager, or a young girl, and you signed up uh, to serve in the military with a bunch of men and live with a bunch of men for two years. <laughs> before anybody found out. So uh, it's a very interesting uh, story. It's a story that probably has rarely been told. Um, those are the things that we like to talk about here at Wild West Diversity. So that's why over these last few weeks during Women's History Month, we want to honor those women of the West, those uh, women of the American Wild West, uh, like you say, women like Johanna Jula, who trained horses for the military. Um, Aunt Riddy, um, who had property and went on cattle drives with men. Uh, Stagecoach Mary Fields, which we talked about a little bit about last week. Um, she was the first one to deliver the mail. And so uh, in, a, in the Western territories, what now we consider um, Cascade, Montana. And so all of these stories you can hear more, you can read more about at wildwestdiversity.com. That's our weekly e-newsletter that's available. You do have to sign up, but um, you just sign in and uh, you'll get those newsletters uh, in your email box. And so you'll get these fabulous stories. We'll also be sharing our living legends there. So these are our historical legends. These are the men and women that lived in the 1700s, 1800s that we've often talked about here. And um, so we'll continue to do that. Coming up in uh, April, we'll be talking with um, Lap No, world painter. So Lap is a artist, a fabulous artist, a classically trained artist. And he has um, became fascinated. He became fascinated with the Big Bend area of South Texas. And um, his wife worked with the ambassador in South Africa for many, many years. And then they, when they retired, they moved to Texas. Um, and he went down and he saw these cowboys and these cattle. And then he got involved with, in seeing rodeos. And so he started painting those images. So I think you'll be 
very excited to see that. So we'll be talking with Laugh. We'll be talking to um, some other uh, rodeo cowboys. We'll be talking again with uh, Sam Allen, our Buffalo soldier. There was a Sergeant Sam Allen who was a Buffalo soldier. And so Sam, for all these years, has volunteered. And um, along with his law enforcement career, um, he has participated as a Buffalo soldier doing what we call living history demonstrations um, at schools, at parks, at um, churches, anywhere someone wants us to come and speak, we're available to come and speak. So if you have a group that you would like us to speak to, certainly put that in the chat or put that in our Facebook or LinkedIn or uh, any of our pages there, our YouTube channel. You can always comment. Uh, we check those and we try to respond as best we can to any of those comments that you might have. And so if you will, um, be sure to do that. So we'll be talking about um, some of these other characters, um, some of, like you say, our Buffalo Soldiers, especially um, Emmanuel Stance, uh, Henry O. Flipper, Isaiah Mays, Benjamin Brown. We had a wonderful gentleman named Wendell Prince who we'll be telling about who um, passed away just recently, uh, right before Christmas, who played Sergeant Benjamin Brown for us. And um, him and Isaiah Mays, so they were on uh, helping a, uh, I guess they were transporting a gold uh, <laughs> wagon, the payroll wagon, which back then people were paid in gold because uh, we didn't, they didn't have dollar bills. And so um, they were attacked uh, by bandits. And um, so they were shot three or four times and uh, Mr. Sergeant Brown, he crawled to uh, a mile or so to a house to get help, but was shot up. And so him along with a number of other um, Buffalo soldiers won medals of honor uh, for their valor in trying to protect this uh, gold uh, wagon of uh, gold that they were bringing in to pay all the soldiers and uh, at the fort there. And so, Anyway, these are the exciting stories that happened because it, it was, um, you know, these people traveled into an unknown territory. They traveled to a place they'd never been before. They didn't know what it was going to be like. And, and sometimes it was hostile and sometimes it was the environment that ho was hostile. Sometimes it was Native Americans that were hostile or people or bandits that were hostile. So there were all these challenges and struggles, but these are people that persevered. They um, stayed the course. They accepted these obstacles and challenges, and they continued on, and they created great lives for themselves and lives for their families. So in my mind, they're really great role models for us today. So when we think about a time and we're struggling or something, maybe we ought to to think about some of our ancestors, to think about what they went through. Uh, they didn't have running water. They didn't have paved streets. They didn't have cars. They were walking or they were on mules or they were on a horse if they were lucky. Uh, they were in a wagon. Um, and so that's how they traveled before the trains came along. And then the trains came and that, that changed the country uh, fairly dramatically too, again, and we'll talk a little bit about that, too, and how that affected some of these people, because a lot of these rough riders and uh, cowboys, they later on became uh, uh, continued to work, but they worked for the highway department or they worked for the trains or they worked for the hotels that came in um, because those were the only jobs that were available to uh, to them because of. Uh, the cattle drives, you know, some of those things, uh, once they started putting up fences and things like that, that changed that landscape of um, that Western lifestyle. So, and that cowboy lifestyle. And so all of those things are things that happened in the past couple of hundred years. And so we're sharing those stories with you. We're, uh, we're bringing people in uh, to talk about those things that know more about it so that you'll be learning about those things. We hope that you'll go back and watch the YouTube channel on the other interviews that we've done. Um, that, that photo of Kathy Williams there that we saw at the front with the two little girls, uh, that was Lee Reed, our storyteller who plays these wonderful women of the West. 
and her grandchildren uh, in the dresses. And she made those dresses. They helped make those dresses. And so she um, works with an after school program, has an after school program for kids in Fort Worth, uh, Texas. And those kids get to engage in uh, working and riding horses and things if they keep their grades up. So they have to perform at school. They have to do certain things to be able to be near the horses. But as you know, and maybe when you were a kid, you were horse crazy. And as you've heard some of our um, uh, living legends that we've talked about here uh, on the Wild West Diversity, Mr. Hearn, he was just horse crazy. That's how he got into rodeo instead of baseball or football or some other activity. He wanted to be around the horses. And a lot of kids have that dream. And so if you've got a child that has that dream, see if you can make that happen for them. Surely there's a farm or a ranch or something nearby or somewhere near you. Maybe you can take a vacation and go out and do that. If you don't have a chance to do horses, you certainly can go fishing. You can go camping. You can take your kids out or your grandchildren out. Um, to the parks, uh, no matter what state you live in, there's a national park there somewhere or a state park. And so you can go to those parks and participate and share this past history with your children or your grandchildren. Um, especially, like I say, we have this heritage trail in Texas that goes up from Galveston Island and up across West Texas to some of these forts. Uh, there are places like Fort McCaver, Fort Davis, where um, they have reenactments, uh, especially throughout the summer, where uh, tourists can come and see what it was like. They can walk through. You can walk through the barracks. You can walk through um, the buildings, the areas, the museums that they have and learn more about all of this wonderful history um, that we have that's rarely told, that a lot of people have never heard or don't know about, just depending on where they live in the world. Uh, and so we appreciate you so much. We hope you'll go and check out wildwestdiversity.com. Check in, subscribe to our newsletter. If you'll go to our YouTube channel, the same thing. It just search Wild West Diversity and subscribe there. And then you'll get a notice about what's coming up, what the next show is, uh, who's going to be on, what living legend we're going to be talking about. Because each week we try to share a historical legend and a living legend. We uh, share that history in a film or a video or some slides and photos of that historical person as much we, as we can. And then we have a conversation with a living legend who's keeping that legacy alive, either through living history, which is what we're talking about today, uh, maybe rodeo, maybe farming, like we talked with Coy Poitier last week, urban farmer and musician and filmmaker, award-winning filmmaker. Um, there's just all kinds of interesting people doing uh, interesting things. And so we want to bring them to uh, Wild West Diversity. We want to bring them to you so that you can see and hear these stories, enjoy these stories, tell other people about these stories. And so we hopefully, we certainly hope you'll do that, that you'll share these stories with other people. Um, if you see the links on our Facebook or our LinkedIn or Twitter or Instagram or TikTok, any of our social media sites, you can follow us on whatever your favorite media is. And um, we'll have information there. We also obviously post each uh, week. We're here Thursday, 5 to 530 um, telling an interesting story, uh, hopefully a story that you've never heard before. And that's why we say we talk about the rarely and untold stories of the American Wild West, the multicultural contribution. So we'll be sharing more Native American stories. We'll be sharing more Hispanic stories. Uh, we'll be sharing more stories about women. Uh, and men as well, Europeans and Asians, because all of these different cultures had a part in the settling of the American West. And when we learn about somebody else's heritage, it really is collective heritage because we all were a part of that. All of these different cultures uh, were a part of it. They were in different places and different communities and they had different skill sets, but all of them uh, had a part in creating what we know as the United States of America. And so it is a great country and we have this great legacy and we have this great Western legacy 
that was not always told correctly. So we're here to tell the true stories, the real stories, and we hope you'll come back each Thursday at five o'clock and, and hear those stories and then share those stories with your friends and family. Thanks so much for watching and we'll be back next week. Hello, this is Liz Lawless, your host for Wild West Diversity, where we tell the rarely and untold stories of multicultural contributions to the settling of the American Wild West. Each Thursday at 5 p.m. Central Standard Time, we'll be sharing a historical legend and a living legend. Someone from history and someone living that Western lifestyle today, keeping it alive for the future generation. We hope you'll join us on Thursday. If not, we'll see you on the trail.